G'day guys, I'm down here at Wavelength Recording. I'm here with Joe. Joe, how are you? G'day Fraser, how are you? How are you viewers? Now tell us a little bit about your studio here. Well, studio, um, purpose built. Um, it contains an SSL, classic SSL 4000 E-Series. Um, nice live room, booths, good gear, great sound. Well, how, how did you get into uh, audio production? Oh, when I was um, 19, I was playing in bands and I did an engineering course uh, in Sydney when I was living in Sydney, um, which I found uh, really, really interesting. I did a year of live, live work uh, and then basically I moved into the studio uh, stuff uh, from there. Um, I really liked, really liked doing it. I still played in the band, but I was pretty, pretty intent on, on um, getting uh, into studio work which it took me a little while to do. Yeah, and what's, uh, what's some of the, the gear that you first started on? Oh, the, geez, the first gear that I started on would have been a 16-track TIAC, or Tascam, uh, an old Yamaha 16-channel desk. Um, digital delays just came in, uh, but basically it was all tape-based. Yeah. And, and uh, the very early rough digital delays, that was, that was all you had. Now, what is, is there a big difference in recording analog to digital? Uh, the biggest difference, there's two main differences. One is the sound. It's a lot warmer and a lot fatter and a lot, not, not as defined, but a lot more creamier, you might say. Uh, that's the main thing. Uh, the next thing is the time it takes to do anything. If a band has to, um, if they want to do it totally on tape, from start to finish, they have to be reasonably well rehearsed because there is no, oh, we'll fix it in editing. It's what it is, and there we go. So if you listen to the old, the old tracks, you'll hear mistakes and you'll hear things happening all the time that they, they didn't get rid of because that's the way it was. Uh, but these days, well, what I use is record, if they want to use to tape, record it onto tape, um, and then just bounce it onto tools, fix it up, and mix off tools. And uh, what, so is Pro Tools the main uh, program that you use? Yeah, Pro Tools is. Uh, it is uh, pretty standard. Uh, some, some people would argue that there are better, but as far as a standard across the world where you can just go into any studio and basically know the, know the operating system and go for it, well, yeah. And here at Wavelength, you do a lot of live recording. Oh, we, yeah, we always like to start everything live because live, there is this chemistry between players. Um, you may not realise it, but if you get a live track down and then do the same track, uh, multi-tracked, there will be a difference in the performance for sure. Because a band is a band because they play together and they feed off each other. And that's what gives a band a feel. Um, and that's what people like a lot of the time. And tell us your little uh, connection with 4 Z. Well, I, I've been... Um, uh, I've always done things and sponsored things uh, for the community uh, as a way of giving back. And 4 uh, is a, is a way for bands, the way I see it, is a way for bands to actually get a start. They get the material um, played on radio, uh, they get uh, some good deals if they become subscribers. Uh, it's the, probably the only outlet where a local band can get some sort of mass exposure. It takes, it, you know, it, it tries its hardest to promote the, uh, the minor, or what would you say? Um, it's, it tries its best to promote, not the mainstream, yeah. which is- And, which is and there is a lot of uh, smaller local bands in Brisbane that are, that are fantastic, that never get the recognition that they deserve. Well, that's true, that's true. And again, it's, um, it's a lot of hard work and you have to take every avenue and community whether it's uh, community media whether it's bridge 31 or triple z logan bay fm doesn't matter it's there and it's there for a, a purpose to get people get the young up-and-comers out there so I, I hear you've got an app available yeah we've got an app um, it's more a, a tutorial and tuning aid than an app uh, there are apps where you know you just put the app up to the drum and it'll give you the frequency, but this actually tells you and teaches you how to tune a drum kit. Um, and it also gives you 
uh, notes to tune toms to. It gives you advice on uh, different uh, treatments for the, for the drums to make them sound different. Um, it's basically meant for drummers, engineers and producers. Now different rooms create different sounds, so that this must really help out whether they're playing in their garage, their rehearsal room, oh, yeah. or, or yeah, to certainly. the studio, right? Yeah, certainly. It, um, it also it, uh, helps you uh, modify the sound to suit the room. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's involved, yes, but it's easy if you take it step by step. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about your desk here. Well, the desk is uh, 1982 vintage. Um, and it's a, a classic 4000 E series. Uh, lots of producers, big name producers, either own one or work on them. Through the 80s and 90s, 95% of most of the stuff that you heard on radio or anywhere was, was mixed on an SSL. Um, great desk, great sound. The difference between mixing in the box and mixing on a, on a desk is just enormous. It is, it's just, there's no comparison and and people that bring in their their home mixes and we just do a little bit of tweaking here soon see what the difference is and it's big and here at wavelength too you actually dry hire your studio out to other engineers we right? do yeah we do um it they shouldn't be intimidated by all these four thousand buttons and knobs because uh it's very very simple to to use i come in set them up uh, if they know how to work tools that's all they need to know and like uh, last weekend, I had a, uh, a student from JMC that comes out. Um, they came out to do a, a bit of work experience, and I asked him, well, what did you think? And he said, well, I thought uh, I wasn't as intimidated by this desk as I thought I would be. Because it is fairly simple. It's Pro Tools laid out for you, basically. It has the same thing. You can see everything. And, it's, it's a, and the studio is set up for easy, easy use. All right, Joe, I've noticed you've got a lot of outboard gear here. Can you talk us through it? Yeah, we've, um, we've got a fair bit we've collected over the years. We, um, there's, uh, the main thing that we, uh, we like using here is the head, um, which is the, a crane song head, which is a, a A to D, D to A clock. Uh, it just makes everything just sound so nice. And it has, a, it has a, uh, an EQ um, portion in there, which uh, adds harmonics and tape saturation. If you're, if you're going straight digital. Um, then we've got f some compressors, some Focusrite, JLM, 1176s, uh, LA2As, Uri's, um, Dramas, Brook Sirens, and there's, there's Lexicon Reverbs, and what else? We've got a little, nice little unit that we've uh, dubbed the Equator that we've had uh, specially made, uh, and that is just a magic piece of work. It just warms everything up. Any digital, harsh digital sounding track that comes in can be just warmed up nicely. Um, then we've got uh, some distresses, some more EQs, preamps. We have um, a couple of Telefunken V7680s, which are a 1950s vintage. Um, they're fantastic preamps. Uh, Germans used to use them for underwater. Uh, communications, uh, great sound, fantastic sound. We've seen your studio, how about we pop over and check out your live room? No, no problem, let's go. Alright Joe, so that was your control room, here we are in the live room, what happens here? Well this is where the action happens, um, basically um, we have the band in here all together, generally we start that way, um, amps in the booths, and once they're all happy, they've got their own headphone mixes, when they're happy with that, and they're feeling comfortable, we hit play and record, and we go from there. And this room's quite versatile in the sense where you can uh, change the sound around a little bit? Yes, we can. We uh, can make it nice and dead, or we can have it really nice and bright, um, with lots of good reverb. Uh, there's no flutter echo in here, and it's great, great decay. Uh, perfect for acoustic instruments. All right, Joe, so we're talking about versatility before. Yes, we were. We've, we've taken the dampeners away, and this is what we're left with. Yep, this is what we're left with. Nice, bright, even decay. No flutter echo. 
So Joe, you, you were saying before that you've got a, a short course coming up. Yep. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, we've got a short course. It's mainly, use, mainly for the uh, home user, uh, the guy who wants to get uh, a better product. It doesn't necessarily want to sit there and do uh, three years of a degree. Um, and uh, basically it's all about hands-on, about getting your uh, knowledge on recording, mixing and mastering uh, above where you are now. Well, that's excellent. It sounds really good. Sounds like a great course. And for any more information, where do we have to go? Uh, www.wavelengthrecording.com.au well, Joe, thanks very much for Thank your time. Fraser. Thanks for bringing us out to your studio. We had a great time here, and we'll see you back at the studio. Okay, sweet. Well, guys, it looks like Wavelength's got a pretty versatile live room for tracking, and that SSL console looks like the business. What's your experience been, guys, with recording? Um, I've had a fair bit of experience with the ovaries and also with other bands. Originally when we started uh, recording our songs, a lot of them was actually done uh, at the TAFE over in South Bank. Yep. So working on assessments, but also just having, you know, because the girls studied there, we had the versatility of being able to just go in and use their equipment. Yep. Um, recorders we went, had a lot of friends working with us. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, and what was the process? I mean, did you guys sort of track demos or, or start doing scratch tracks before you went in or was it because you had the access to that you kind of spent a lot of time in there working on the songs as well? Just working on but mostly we'd just go in yeah you see scratch tracks so basically they would just uh, hook everything up recorders kind of jamming through the songs a few times uh, then we'd go in and just re record our individual pieces over the top yep. um, and then it'd all just get mixed and mastered after that once we were sort of happy and didn't stuff everything up. <laughs> yeah of course of course and I mean the, the process for you guys in studio um, do you, do you guys sort of spend a lot of time in the studio together or do you kind of like your own time to go through and track your parts? Together, you're a band. Like, yeah. I don't understand how some bands do that. I mean, it's it's a group thing. Like, it's the experience, you know. Mucking around. Mucking around. Yeah. Playing pranks on people. Like, that's what music's about. Like. Yeah, any crazy stories? What's the, what's the funnest thing that's happened whilst in studio with you guys? Oh, goodness me. Honestly, when people are getting like a really serious part that they, they keep stuffing up. Yeah. Just especially if you've got like the windows in the Bogle group. Oh, Bogle God. Group, just sort of doing like the the surprise Jack in the Box kind of thing. Yeah. I like to dance in front of those those windows <laughs> when they're done. So, seductively, you know, seductively removing dance. Yep. Horrible, yeah. horrible things. What you can do to distract each other. Okay, great guys, there's still a lot more to come. After the break, Jake's going to be heading out to LOA's Music to find out all about digital audio workstations. And a bit later on the show, I'm going to be catching up with Australian Concert Productions for some more live sound tips. See you guys soon.